Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is the market preview for Wednesday, July 23rd, 2014. Today we had a, a positive day across the board. The uh, the big winner today was the uh, was the small caps, the Russell 2000. Uh, definitely outperformed the market. And the, and the bigger the stocks, uh, the more they lagged. Today the, uh, the Dow uh, was the big lagger. The YM futures were only about three-tenths of a percent, which is only half as much as... Uh, as the uh, NQ futures, and even uh, even less than what the uh, what the Russell futures were up on the day, so definitely small cap focus day. The internals today were were fairly decent. We're plus uh, you know 1,100 issues 1,100 issues on New York, and plus about a thousand on Nasdaq. The trend closed at 0 0.95. It did move the uh, the 10-day average a little bit closer to the uh, reversal area. Uh, we're at 0 0.94. We've got to get down to uh, 0 0.85. To uh, record that uh, that climactic reading, so we're we're moving that direction, but but by no means uh, by no means there yet. Let's take a look at the the futures charts. Let's start with the uh, the, the weakest first. Here, are the Nasdaq the uh, the uh, YM futures. I'll see uh, the right chart up. So here, are the YM futures uh, represent the uh, the broad market. We still have our 13 exhaustion in place. We were higher on the day, but really didn't uh, didn't expand the range to the upside, nor did we make a new high close on this move. So the uh, secret exhaustion warning is still in place, marking the end of uh, the end of that last impulse. Still holding above the 10 EMA in this area of conge congestion, which is a small positive that we haven't released out of this range either way to really make some to do something definitive. So the key levels to watch are going to be the uh, the risk level and then the plus two ace level to the upside to the downside sixteen thousand eight seventy five at the eight ace level on the Murray Math box is going to be uh, going to be pretty key. Let's move on and jump up to the uh, the Russells. They were the best performer on the day. Got up here in the area of these two moving averages. That's the ten which is the blue and the fifty which is the red. So right up into that area, nice little uh, rebound out of this uh, out of this potential pivot area. We had our nine bars down, so we're looking for some kind of a snapback here. Starting to get it to the upside here. The next level is going to be seven eighths at 11.72. Uh, support is going to be at this gap fill if we uh, take the downside uh, tomorrow. The uh, ES futures did uh, make a new high in the move, but uh, wound up closing at or near the lows. So that's really uh, uh, more of a distribution day, even though we're higher on the day. Also note that it's small, but we did settle down below the day's opening, so uh, that could be a range high uh, uh, problem for the market here at uh, at uh, the height of this move. So I have to see if they can um, they can build on that tomorrow. This gap is definitely something that's going to going to be in play, I would think. Have a similar situation in Nasdaq. Nasdaq was relatively more strong, though. You can see we've got a white body candle here, so we closed a little bit above the day's open. We do have that gap to deal with. Uh, you know, we're in earnings season now, so we're going to get gaps pretty much every morning. So we're going to have to deal with this right now. Levels to watch are going to be uh, yesterday's high, and then above that, the seven ace level at 39.84. Key support is going to be at the six ace level where it meets the uh, 10 period moving average. Bonds today were actually a little bit higher on the day, even though we had kind of a uh, risk on a uh, day where we're uh, seeing some um, some money flows into equities. The uh, bonds did make a new high close on the move. That's the notable feature here. The other thing is that we've got MACD that's starting to gain momentum here above the zero line. We're, uh, we've touched this 6 ace level, but we don't have any any extremely important resistance up until we get until we get to this 8 ace level at 118 and 3 quarters. And there's plenty of room here in the uh, seeker countdown before we get there. We're only three bars up right now. Oil futures uh, on the day uh, were actually fairly weak, still being contained below the 50 period moving average. So right now we've got a range of 101.56 up to the uh, high water mark here, right in the area of the uh, 50 period moving average at about 103 and three quarters. So that's your trading band for right now. Gold futures, a little bit sloppy on the day, down about $7, $7. Uh, settled back down again below the 10-period the moving average and also below this 4 ace level. So 13, 12, 50 is, is going to be uh, a pretty pretty heavy number here. Remember the, uh, the 0 ace, the 4 ace, and the 8 ace levels uh, are, like, are like magnets on the, uh, on the GAN box. So they, they'll, they'll, they'll be a strong pull. Here's our daily multi-sector chart here of the late cycles. You see that uh, we had... Uh, little distribution here and a kind of a sloppy day in the uh, XAU and that was really just probably more of a source of funds than anything else. The uh, BKX 
the green <laughs> the green line on this particular graph continues to underperform. Um, that's really not a cause for concern as long as there's some good good uh, good participation and some and some uh, some heavy lifting being done by the uh, by the transports which rep are represented by the purple line here which are very very strong making a new high uh, racking out new highs and higher lows and we also want to see the slack picked picked up by the oil services the drillers so the energy names here right now the oil services is uh, still trapped below the previous high but we're starting to form a bit of a wedge here so we need to see this breakout and continue on to the upside Here's a look at the NDX SPX ratio chart. This is a chart that's going to show strength in the uh, NDX versus the S&P when the ratio is rising. And when it's falling, as in as in this area here, the uh, the NDX is underperforming the S&P. So right now we are seeing uh, continued outperformance from the NDX. Uh, we're getting up into a key area here of uh, relative performance. So once we once we get up to this previous high water mark, we're probably going to feel some resistance here. They may see a hiccup in the market. So this is going to be a key area and uh, definitely worth noting. So we, we've, we've had a, a pretty good run of outperformance on the NASDAQ side of the market starting in May here all the way up to now, uh, which is pretty much late July. So we've had a, a good period of outperformance, but the market does go through uh, you know, ro rotational uh, periods where, uh, where the leaders need to, uh, need to rest. So I think we're probably approaching one of those areas. So definitely figure that into your, uh, into your analysis going forward. Next up, here's a look at the individual sectors ranked from best to worst. Hardware was the uh, was the top gun. We'll likely see that move around after Apple reports this evening for tomorrow's trade. So that'll probably gap. Transports, uh, as we talked about earlier, were very very strong. Uh, note that the countdown now we are at 13 bars up still in in the uh, in the uh, standard seeker, but we're now 12 12 bars up in the Comer. So we're getting up into an area where we could see some uh, some uh, resistance coming from the Comer when we get to 13 bars up. So uh, definitely figure that in. OSX is uh, was fairly strong on the day. That uh, that's definitely a, a, a bright point for the market, uh, without any doubt. So we got to make sure that uh, that that continues to be strong. Uh, bottom of the bottom of the uh, pecking order here, the uh, utilities were actually kind of weak, even though bonds were higher, which is a little bit of a disconnect. So keep an eye on these for tomorrow. They may be uh, a leading indicator that the uh, that the uh, treasuries are starting to get a little a little long in the tooth on this bounce. XAU is a source of funds, as we talked about. That was pretty weak. Pharmaceuticals were uh, kind of Kind of a uh, decent, decent performance, but not great. Uh, certainly uh, doing better than the broad market overall. Uh, the semiconductors, um, one of the other key things that will keep the NASDAQ outperforming, has been doing okay. The, the, bi the biotechs were up about 1%, uh, but I don't think at this point we're going to see a lot of leadership from the, from the bios. They definitely could, uh, could advance some more, and certainly there's, uh, there's news-driven days where, where they will outperform. But we're, at this point, we need to see some uh, continued strength from the semiconductors, and a lot of these semiconductors are getting getting pretty long in the tooth like, uh, like SanDisk. All right, here's a look at the uh, oil services, the OSX. Ten days up now on this uh, secret exhaustion run. Once we get to 13, we're going to have uh, uh, the end of a uh, the end of a run here. We're getting close to uh, this 8 ace level, so if we continue up to this 8 ace level and produce the 13, it has the potential to be a double top. Here's your first touch. This will be the second touch against the key level. That's 8 ace at 312.50, and that in combination, if we do print a 13 in and around there, is uh, it's going to be a it's going to be a real head knocker for this thing, and probably uh, give it either some sort of a retracement to the downside or really hold it in check for a while just to uh, kind of recharge itself going laterally. So we'll have to see how that one plays out. What, but let's not let's not get a, get ahead of ourselves and make sure we get that 13 exhaustion locked in first. <clears throat> Here's a look at the transports. Eight bars up now in the startup phase. When we get to nine, we're probably going to have some kind of a reflex to the downside, uh, as we usually do, or at least be, be held in check. This eight candle is high enough now above six and seven, so we could definitely see that uh, if we do print nine up. The other thing to keep in mind here is that we are up against this risk level on the uh, seeker exhaustion run, so this definitely could uh, uh, be another area that's going to give this uh, key group a little trouble. Banking index did nothing today, still just pinched between the two EMAs, the 10 up above and the 50 down below. So we've got to resolve that range before we do anything else important. You can see we're still feeling the effects of this 13 exhaustion right here where we're 
going down to a major level and, uh, and, and grinding against that. Also keep in mind here that we are threatening uh, with the uh, with the zero line in the MACD. A lot of times that, that zero line is a little bit of a support area, but once it's breached, that, that can be an area where uh, momentum starts to really kick in to the downside. Last up, the uh, let's talk about the XAU. We do have a 13 in place on the XAU, which marks the end of this impulse here that started at this minus one ace level here uh, back in back in uh, early June. So we've gotten up here, we've marked the end of this. We have a little support here at 100 at the four ace level. And if it continues lower, then we could uh, could see potentially this uh, this two ace level come into play where we've got some moving averages that are, that are uh, stacked up as well. We've got the 50 and the 200 right in that area, so that's going to be an important area. If it does bust to the upside and take out the risk level, remember if it does that very quickly, that could be a sign that something very very powerful is about to happen. So I'll have to see which way it uh, breaks out of this little mini range for now. All right, folks, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for TradeSite.